So I have this ominous feeling like nothing is ever going to change with affirmative action. As long as I've been alive, affirmative action has been a pretty prominent force, especially in university admissions and elsewhere. So the particular case before the Supreme Court is about university admissions, and this is Student for Fair Admissions v. Harvard, and also Student for Fair Admissions v. Uh, UNC, University of North Carolina. And here's the deal. Um, the way these cases have gone in the past is that the Supreme Court has made these kind of nuanced positions. You can do a little bit of affirmative action, but you can't be too blatant about it. And ultimately, what's resulted is that nothing changes, and there's obviously a lot of affirmative action still happening. That said, in some states, they banned affirmative action, and it seems like they really did ban it, and you can see the effects because the demographics of the schools changed significantly, and that's really the evidence. So regarding the case that we will possibly hear about very soon, uh, which again is uh, Students for Fair Admissions v. Harvard, we heard oral arguments about this case last year. And I get the impression from the arguments of some of the Supreme Court justices that they want to once again kind of pursue a middle road. But on the other hand, at least they accepted the case, and that seems to indicate that they take some issue with the way that Harvard and UNC are doing affirmative action. Um, I think that Judge Gorsuch seemed the most on point and frankly the, the one that I feel we are at one mind in terms of his comments. So let's take a listen to what he had to say. Follow up on uh, Justice Thomas's questions about diversity. Um, again, these holistic admissions approaches seem to stem from the 1920s at Harvard and uh, they were used as cover for quotas uh, for Jewish persons who uh, the university apparently felt had too many students attending. And I, I guess I'm struggling still to understand how you distinguish between what this court has said is impermissible, a quota, with what you argue should be permissible going forward, which is diversity. How can you do diversity without taking account of numbers? So I think there's, there's two separate points I'd like to make on that, Your Honor. So on the, uh, the sordid history uh, of the early holistic process, uh, I don't think anyone has ever uh, accused the University of North Carolina as having... I'm not suggesting that. Yeah, yeah and, and we, uh, we took our cues from this court, from the Bakke decision and, and from... Uh, oh, Gorsuch I understand and, that too. But I guess my question again, just to get to the core of it rather than circling around it, is how can you do diversity which that's what you're arguing for, without taking account of numbers. So Judge Gorsuch makes a great point. How can you say that you want diversity, but you're not going to have a quota? And this is the dance that you see in all these deliberations about affirmative action. Oh, no, 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 it's not a quota. We're just like considering diversity and it's holistic. And you can see that that is a lot of BS, frankly, because you know, the proof is in the pudding that it's, it's just obvious that these universities are letting students in, in large part based on their race. And just take a look at the fact that many universities made SATs optional and ACTs. I mean, that is crazy. And, and people with, you know, adolescent children who are smart are kind of racking their brains like, how am I going to get my kid into a good college in this system? And that's why this is an important decision in the Supreme Court. Um, Judge Gorsuch also said that there's a pet industry in which Asians learn how to appear less Asian in their college applications, which is kind of, it would, it would be almost be funny if it weren't kind of sad and kind of sick. So Asians are they're penalized basically for the racial group that they're in, not to mention white people. And affirmative action is really meant to bolster the enrollment of African Americans and Hispanics. And the question is, if you were to end affirmative action, how would that affect the enrollment of those minority groups? And we can kind of make some inferences about what might happen. In 
Harvard's arguments, they said that if they were to ban affirmative action, their share of black students would drop from 14% to 6%, and their Hispanic enrollment would drop from 14% to 9%. So they would argue that that is not a good enough representation in order to say that we are diverse. And notice that 14% is like exactly almost the black population of um, the United States or the um, percentage of blacks um, in relation to the total population. So that, that doesn't seem accidental. It seems like Harvard said, okay, let's make sure that African Americans are represented according to their percentage of the population. But once they have, if they got rid of affirmative action, then it, it might not look like that. And and what you hear when when you hear even the conservatives talking about it, they're saying, well, how can we get rid of affirmative action but still have diversity? So it's almost like everyone is singing from the same hymn book. They're all saying that diversity is super important. Well, you can't really square that circle because um, now, and, and, and I listen to some of the arguments from Justice Roberts and uh, Coney, what's her name, Barrett. It's like they're trying to find out how you can get rid of affirmative action and then maybe like have other ways to make sure that you're diverse. Like maybe it could be the student's personal essay could make a big deal about their race. And then the admissions officer could say, wow, this is a great essay. And it happens to be the, you know, the racial group that we're looking for more of. So what's the point of that? That's the same thing. Um, and it's kind of, you know, no disrespect to Chief Justice Roberts, but it just sounds kind of typical of this guy that he really uh, doesn't want to be controversial and he's, he's trying to be Mr. Centrist. And I fear that with that attitude that nothing is going to change. Um, on the other hand, it seems that these states that have banned affirmative action through referendums typically have seen uh, big changes. For example, Michigan banned affirmative action and saw a 44% drop in black enrollment from 2006 to 2022. So for whatever reason, when it comes to these state referendums, like they're not messing around, they really do enforce it. I know it, it kind of sounds bad to say that a drop in in uh, minority enrollment shows that affirmative action was really banned, um, but it does. And that's not to say that that's a good thing in and of itself, of course. I think a good thing would be if we can get everybody performing well academically so we don't have to do this very divisive um, system of racial preferences, which is so controversial. I think we need to get back to merit I think that if certain groups are not doing as well in the SATs, let's figure out why. Let's instill the virtue of hard work and studying and reading. I mean, you, you look at studies that show how little students are reading out of school. So what do you expect? Of course, they're not going to do well in the SATs, but nobody wants to say that. Um, Nobody wants to use the common sense solution because, I don't know, it involves um, self-reliance and, and that's not a cool thing to talk about now. Oh, well. Anyway, my name is Michael McCara. Thank you so much for watching. In the description, I have my social media. Follow me on Twitter and, most importantly, subscribe to my channel. Your vibe.